So you've brought home a new fish. Congratulations. Now what? Well, hopefully you did a bit of research before your purchase. It's really helpful to know ahead of time what you're getting into. A quick Google search of the fish in the store will give you a whole wealth of information. Your new fish should live for years, decades even, and it's up to you to provide the very best care you can for that time. Fish are living things after all. Hi guys and girls, I'm Reef Men, and this time we're going over the steps and care that you should provide your new fish when you get them. Now, I recently purchased a net caught copper band butterfly fish from liveaquara.com. Species like the copper band butterfly fish are very sensitive to poor conditions in transit. So a net caught specimen from a quality vendor is just going to set you up for better success. You can usually request fish like this net caught special fish like that in person from your local fish store. But this being a pandemic and all, online shopping is just safer these days. So assuming you already have a quarantine tank, and it could be anything, right? An aquarium, a Rubbermaid bin, a brute trash can. Step one should be to have it ready for your fish's arrival. Call the store ahead of time and have the salinity in your quarantine tank match to the salinity that your new fish is going to be in. This will save you from having to do anything other than match the temperature of the water when your fish arrives. You should float the bag in the water of your quarantine tank for a few minutes. I like to use 10 or maybe 15 minutes, and that gives it time to adjust to the temperature of your tank. Don't actually open the bag at this time. The vendor probably used oxygen to fill the bag, so don't worry about air. Your fish is actually safer without the air being exchanged with open air due to ammonia and other chemicals that may have built up during shipping. Now, once the water in the bag has reached the temperature of your tank, you can simply open the bag and let the fish swim out. Remember, you did match the salinity of your quarantine tank to the salinity of the water in the bag. If you didn't do that, you should slowly exchange some water from the bag to the tank and so forth over the course of maybe half an hour to equalize the salinity. Now that your new fish is swimming around in your quarantine tank, it's time to step back and just let it settle down some. It's been through quite an ordeal getting to you, and it's normal for the fish to be stressed. Maybe turn out or dim the room's lights if you can. Give it several hours just to unwind and get accustomed to your tank. Often, they're not going to eat right away, and I think the stress is part of the reason for that. Sometimes it's hard to get a fish to eat. You should watch their behavior. Are they picking at things in your quarantine tank? Maybe some mastic like this would help. It actually is just a sticky food. It sticks to rocks and it lets fish that pick at rocks eat naturally over time. The beauty of a quarantine tank is you can easily clean it. So go wild. The sky's the limit for what you could try to feed it and to help coax a fish to eat. Worst case, you just remove the uneaten food. I don't like to start medications right away, though I do give my fish a round of Prazipro just to combat any parasites that they might have. I give the fish several days to a few weeks even to relax and start eating before stressing it with any medications. That said, if you do notice maybe fuzzy spots or white spots or red or something like that on your fish, I would recommend starting medication earlier. Giving your fish some time before that though will let them gain some body weight and let them get used to your routine and your food before you start stressing them with tank transfers or medications. The most common medication that people might use for new arrivals is copper. Copper fights marine ick and chiliated copper medications like copper power are generally safer than ionic copper medications like cupramine. You should look for medications containing chiliated copper if you need to treat ick and don't want to use the tank transfer method. I do recommend the tank transfer method though, as it works very well and doesn't expose your fish to any chemicals. Wrasse, mandarins, pipefish, and lionfish are all sensitive to copper in general. Antheas should also be watched very carefully, as a few species of them are also very sensitive to it. Those fish are going to be better candidates for the tank transfer method during quarantine, as using copper will likely harm, if not kill them. Chloroquine phosphate is another common medication for fish. And it's useful against a variety of parasites and maladies, including ick and even velvet. This drug is very hard to find right now, though, because a couple people died thinking that it could be a cure for COVID. It's not, but it is a great medication for use in quarantine tanks. Though wrasses and antheas cannot tolerate it, and you shouldn't use it on wrasses or antheas. The tank transfer method is a great way to prevent marine ick from getting into your tank. You just need two aquariums, and then you move the fish from one into the other aquarium every third day. Do that for four transfers and you can be pretty certain that the fish will not have ick anymore. 
You can check out my very old video, it's linked there, on the topic if you want more information on it. I highly recommend these little ammonia alert badges. Water quality is your highest priority in quarantine tanks, just like in your display reef. And these little badges can help you spot trouble before it gets to a point that actually hurts your fish. I like to do water changes by mixing fresh salt water, adding it to my display, and then taking water out of my display and using that for my quarantine tank. This brings over bacteria and that sort of thing from my main tank and helps keep the quality of the water in my quarantine tanks high. After a few weeks, when you're ready to add the fish to your display, remember that your existing fish might be territorial and aggressive to the new addition. I like to tape a mirror onto the glass of the tank while adding new fish. The most aggressive fish are going to attack their reflections, and then they'll leave your new fish alone. Good luck with your new fish. Reef fishes all have their own personalities, so take the time to get to know your fish. They'll reward you with years of interest. I hope the video was helpful. If you have any new fish tips and tricks that I didn't cover, feel free to drop them in the comments below and we can all learn. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more like it, then consider subscribing. I hope you have a good day, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.